in the V3 folder we're able to drive around the landscape using this on-screen joystick. All that the on-screen joystick does is it provides the value between 1 and minus 1 in the Y and 1 and minus 1 and 1 in the X. That's all it's there to do. And then it calls a callback with those values. Let's have a look at the code. To add it to your game, you simply do that. Joystick equals new joystick, passing in an options object, pass it a game, pass it this, and pass it an on move callback. And we'll just have a look at the on move callback. It gets a forward, but that's a number between minus one and one, and a turn, that's a number between minus one and one. And it just saves those values in a property of the game called JS. Maybe slightly confusing that. We can call it whatever we want. It's JS not for JavaScript, but JS for joystick. If we, in the animate method, we call update drive. An update drive takes the values for that have just been set and uses them to apply forces. By adjusting these, you can adjust how fast it goes, how quickly it breaks, and how sharply it steers. We calculate a force based on this maximum force value and our forward value, and steer is the maximum steer value times our turn value. So they're going to be numbers between positive and negative versions of these. So the maximum force is, varies between minus 1000 and 1000, and the maximum turning force between minus 0.5 and 0.5. If forward's not zero, then we need to clear the braking value. So we set in the braking value for wheel 0, 1, 2 and 3 to 0 and then we're applying an engine force using our force value we've calculated to the back two wheels 2 and 3. If it is 0 then we need to apply a brake to each one of the wheels and steering we apply a steering value based on what we've calculated to the front two wheels, zero and one. And that's all you have to do. Juggling these numbers is um, a bit of a black art, but you can just practice at it. You might be interested to know how we've done the follow camera. Um, if you go back to where we called init physics, then we create a three object 3D. Doesn't have it isn't a mesh or anything. It's just simply a position. We give it the camera's position, and we add it to the scene, and then we make its parent the chassis body three mesh. So it's going to move along with the chassis body, and then. In our animate method, we call update camera, and the camera's position we interpolate using the lerp method, so the world position of 0, 0, 0 in the follow cam. In other words, the follow cam's exact position in the world. And we move 5% towards that, that value by setting this value to 0 0.05. If you set it to 0.5, it would be halfway to that value. But this is me moving quite subtly towards that value. And then we ensure that we carry on looking at the chassis body three mesh position. This is little, a little tracker for our um, shadow so that our shadow doesn't dis disappear. Quite a useful method. And that gives us a a drivable car 
with the camera tracking it around the landscape. I think we're ready to start making it look an awful lot prettier. Cool stuff. This video is from the course Create a 3D Car Racing Game with 3GS and Canon GS. To get the course at a great discount, pull down the description.